Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are still showing early access footage from early access The Brothers War. So while the cards don't actually come out till the 15th of November on MTG Arena, you get to see some of the gameplay well before you even have to make your crafting decisions. That makes this video sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. All right, what are we doing? We're playing Mono Green. Mono Green is always a popular video. People get really excited to watch Watch it, and I think they continue to hope that Mono Green will return to the glory it had uh, previously when Blizzard Brawl was an excellent removal spell and cards like Old Growth Troll were very, very strong. And has that happened? Well, Green can't really do it alone. What we are doing here is something that I think is very unique to Green decks. I don't know if there's ever been one like this. It's an artifact themed green aggro deck. Usually the subject of like like the artifact theme doesn't coincide with the green theme because green's into nature. But here we get a little Easter egg that told us that this deck might exist called Teething Wormlet. This new card is a green mana for a 1-1 worm and is, has death touch if you have three or more artifacts. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. If this is the first time this ability resolved this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the wormlet. So we want to make at least one artifact a turn to keep this growing up to be good good and strong. So what does that? Well, Gallagreter says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you can make a tap treasure token. That alone can trigger the wormlet. Then we've got Briar Ridge Tracker, which makes a clue, which is an artifact that can trigger the wormlet. But on top of that, we've got some fresh new artifact creatures coming out of the new set that all help trigger the wormlet. Rootwire Amalgam is a great modal card. For one in a green, you can have a 2-3 prototype, or for five, you can have a 5-5. Five, five. And for three in a green green, you can sacrifice it to create an XX colorless golem where X is three times this thing's power. It gains haste till end of turn, then you have to it, you can only activate it as a sorcery. So this thing can really level up, and uh, whether it's prototyped or not, if you use that five-man ability, you'll have a giant threat. Speaking of giant threats, we have Dab Monkey, Simeon Simulacrum, which uh, 2 1 Ape, when it enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. That can make things very large. If you have a Wormlet, then you play the, sim the Simulacrum, then you get like three plus one plus one counters on this thing. It's a huge threat. And it has an Earth. So if the opponent kills it, you can, or cast a board wipe, you can bring it back from the graveyard and attack the next turn with plus one plus one counters as well. It can put the counters on itself. Then we have. The big, the big one, Clay Champion. This is a 2-2 two -two with four and X in the cost. So it does scale up after the first four. For each two green spent to cast it, it enters with three plus one plus one counters. There's also this, you know, white mana ability. We don't have any white mana. Maybe we could get it off treasures, but it's not really the plan. The idea is that this is an artifact so it puts a counter on the Wormlet. It's a four mana card, so it puts a counter on the pack leader. And if it's just using the mana for itself, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. If, if you get a little bit more mana, you know, six mana, it's an 11-11. Eleven, eleven. And it just goes from there. It's keyword big. So we're going to find out if keyword big is still really good in the format. And just for the memes, I've got one unnatural growth to make big even bigger. So is this the future of mono green aggro curving out with artifacts, putting plus one plus one counters everywhere and smashing the opponents with the largest creatures they've ever seen? Well, we're going to find out. Let's dive in. Let the mono green nonsense begin. And we go first. This curve looks absolutely devastating if we pull off the lands. On the play, you're about 50-50 to hit one of them, and then hitting two is pretty hard. But we get to go Beast Caller, Pack Leader, before we even unveil our artifact powers against Rafine's Tower and Rafine's Tower. Bang, instant cut down, okay? I guess we'll play the Gala Greeters since we never hit the land. See what our opponent's up to. Good old Esper so far. I guess we'll attack first and see what they do. I'm going to play the tracker either way, I believe, but... Make them decide whether or not to target this Greeters. Which I think they plan to do no matter what, but we got them to take a damage. That's fun. 
All right, let's make a treasure. Give us more options. And hero's downfall. All right. Bank buster. Four cards left. How many of those remove things, I wonder? So, what do we do? We can play out just a ton of creatures and see if there's a board wipe. I don't think we can beat a board wipe. We could play clay champion and just have a massive threat that if they can't kill it, we can win. They probably have at least one more piece of removal, right? Uh, this is better later, though. Yeah, I think we just play out. If they have a board wipe and we lose to it, we lose to it. They they, they played removal, removal, board wipe. What do, what do you want? Okay, another spot removal. Kind of a sign that they don't have a board wipe. So here's the Simeon Simulacrum. Put counters over here. This will gain a counter. We'll hit hard. Potentially a lethal threat next turn, especially with what we know we have in hand. Bankbuster draws. Okay. I think we just go for it. Oh, wait. Oh, you gotta do four, then... So X is equal to two. My bad. Doesn't play around make disappear, but if they make disappear, they might just die. Eleven, eleven. Hello. Two other creatures you control. Uh... Not going to matter here, right? Because we didn't spend any white. But it's an artifact, so we do get a counter on the Wormlet. An opponent has to survive. Okay, Infernal Grasp. Doomblade Tribal, continuing its reign of terror. Just all removal spells. <laughs> Why do you even play other colors? I'm confused. Yes. <laughs> We've defeated mono removal spells. In, in, impressive for a green deck. Ever since the announcement of the CoolStuffInc.com Dragon Rider Token and Playmat Bundle, people have been asking me, CGB, what qualifies you to be a Dragon Rider? Incredible good looks. You must look handsome riding a dragon. Thick, flowing hair, very crucial. Must be blowing in the breeze, must look good wet in the rain. All number one mythics can ride a dragon. What qualifies you to be a Dragon Rider? Leave me a comment. Check out the Cobra Go Blue Dragon Rider Playmat and token bundle only 500 available and only available for pre-order until november 21st coolstuffinc.com slash cgb we go first with a sweet hand if we draw a three drop it'll be perfect three drop and a land which avatar is is this new one i never go to the store to look at the new avatars i'm a i'm a horrible representative i know Yes, yes, yes. Hello. We're all friends here. Until somebody gets smashed in the face. We got a storm carved coast. All right. Just draw a creature. Thank you. That will do. Thirteen. So, you've got three mana? I've got three creatures. What are you going to do? You going to stop me? A braid. Not letting it get bigger. Let's me put a counter right there. Uh, yeah, one. Don't know why that was sticking, but interesting. So it has to be zero because we have to pay the first four. We're figuring these things out. That gets a plus one, plus one counter. I want to have something they can do here. It might be a March of Otherworldly Light. That's an 8-8. Eight, eight. That's a counter. This does not matter because we didn't pay white mana. Well, I hope it's a Temporal Firestorm or a Burn Down the House and that being an 8-8 eight, eight matters when their Sweeper is ready to be cast. They're going to cast Consider. Okay. You're at 7. Phasing 14 power. Better do something cool. Iconoclast. That can make a lot of blockers. 
So I guess we want to swipe it. And I guess I'll use the champion. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to play the root wire amalgam as a prototype. And the reason we're going to do that is that's what's going to do the swiping. Because if the opponent has a spot removal, we don't want them to use it on a creature that's going to attack here. But wait a minute. They could have an abrade or a lightning strike. Does that mean we're supposed to use the clay champion as the swipe? If they have a bounce spell, we'll really regret that. Okay, um, let's go for it. I think we should play around the burn spell, not the bounce spell. That's what I get. That is what I get. Interesting. They're willing to give up the Iconoclast here. Maybe not. Those blockers are really helpful. Might stone, weak stone. Okay, they can still cast an artifact spell with that thing. This is a Jeskai Mishra deck, potentially. Okay. Again. Plus one, plus one counter. Target, target. Someone's gotta block the greeters. And go into two. Still facing an 8-8. Eight, eight. I mean, keyword big is a keyword. Holy crap, that thing's massive. However, little one ones can block it, and it appears we'll continue to. Uh-oh, there's Urza. Uh-oh, the thing could happen, and we don't have trample. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see. I I think they're gonna do the thing, and I don't know if we can beat it. Them messing up our tail swipe was crucial. Although, it's their whole turn. They can make four one ones. We could draw another tail swipe. I guess they're gonna get another one one from wedding announcement. So let's see what they do. So so many abilities. I, I don't even want to read it. We know that they can exile a permanent and make two 1-1s, one then make another 1-1. One one. That is an option. Yeah, that... Okay, they make four 1-1s. One four of them. And there's another. Now, next turn, they all get larger. face force them all to block make those make that army shrink down a little bit really sucks though that we couldn't get another creature onto the board this turn to keep up with all this because they have a lot of extra fodder every turn and they're going to start making two twos if they find that board wipe it's over Okay, that's probably good enough to end the game. I am the Empress Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. You're done. Each device has a role in my plan. Each device has a role in my plan. There's a swipe, but it's too late. Man, Swipe is a bad card. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, all right. All right, what do I want to save? Probably the tracker, right? Oh, wait. If we had drawn that that one turn, one turn sooner. Mm.
At least this isn't making creatures anymore. Mm, now every spell they draw makes creatures. Okay, yeah. E enough is enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> well done, Urza. All right, we get to lead on Wormlet and a Beast Caller. And then hopefully we draw any land in the whole deck. And we have these three drops that will just start triggering everything. So cute. It's so cute. Can't get enough of that. Jaffer's going to play some mono red, maybe? I guess we'll get greeters out first. And then if the greeters lives, making treasures will start triggering the teething wormlet and produce mana that we can use to cast these. You know, okay. You know, it really wants to cast a creature to take advantage of this. And there it is, Phoenix Chick. So this just looks like another mono red spam the board aggro pile. Uh, do we play the two, three? Let's get the beast caller down. And then let's make a treasure, gain a life. And give them the business. That life gain might be crucial. I mean, when you're mono red, your big, big conundrum is where do I point my burn spell? What do I do? Looks like the choice is the greeters. Are you also missing a land, Jaffer? Yes, you are. Okay. So I guess we should use our mana to get as far ahead as we can. This produces a clue token and makes a 4-3. But this produces two plus one plus one counters and another body. So counter. And let's go here. That thing gains life, so we want it as large as we can make it. We go to 14 and we swing in for eight. found your third land it's not fair they're all swinging i'm taking it do your worst we go to eight now you have to survive the next attack bloodthirsty adversary as a blocker it looks like okay well still on two lands but we've got to play so this has to be blocked this is still a two turn clock and we could keep this back to trade doesn't really like the difference between the opponent being at four and two isn't tremendous and we have to make sure we survive this combat another adversary chick just getting in <laughs> okay, that's another counter, so we'll play it. But it's not another life. So you're going in for sure. You're going in for sure, because those are lethal threats. If we attack with both of these, though, and these are both blocked, the opponent has to block these two. So, all right, everybody go. Removal spell. Nope, head's face. All right, four needs to draw a burn spell. Oh, we go to one. Oh, look, a land. <laughs> all right, well, that was terrifyingly close and all the life we gained from the wormlet really mattered. Would have definitely lost without it. All right, we go first, so we get to lead on Wormlet, Beast Caller, Tracker. Yeah, it's a heck of a hand. Um, do we lead on the Wormlet, though? Pack Leader is going to be more damage here since we're going into Beast Caller. Get him. All right, first removal spell. It's Grixis, so I'm sure it's another Doomblade tribal deck. Although those have been the decks we've been kind of pushing around today.
We get a lot of value out of our cards. We got a 3-3 menace. That's a problem. Wait, that is an artifact, isn't it? Isn't it? Although ramping them is probably bad. Let's just offer them the tracker. I think they might reanimate it. We might need this later. And now we make another clue. Pumps the wormlet. Bitter reunion. So they discard and they draw two and they discarded a land. Does seem like a reanimator deck to me. No land drop though. All right, no creature to pair this with. Let's try drawing. Okay, that's pretty good. Very needed. Let's put the counters here because of cut down, which might be what's holding priority. Go to eight. There's the land that they need. I'm sure that they need. Brotherhood's end, three damage. Okay, tracker's alive. And we can bring this back with the unearth ability. Raw. That'll do. Unearth, what an ability. Sneaky good card, this little Simeon. Today's Patreon shout out goes out to Zach Dushini. Dushini? Dushini? Zach, thank you very much for supporting the channel. You're at the 999 tier, which means your tokens are on their way. If you would like a shout out in video as other sweet, as well as other sweet benefits like signed tokens sent to your US mailing address, then please check out patreon.com slash covert go blue. Zach, you're very cool. Now back to the video. All right, we're up against the Asian Avenger on the play. Asian Avenger loves control decks. Looks like I have to be the one that brings it to him this time. But this hand is amazing and exactly where we want to be. Dahlia, it's not like you. Fortunately, doesn't mess with me. All right, so we'll make a treasure. That's two things. So this will be a three, three. So we'll put counters here. Oh my goodness. Oh, it only triggers once a turn? Oh no, I only... No, that's an artifact. That's an artifact. First time. Okay. It's the first time the ability resolved this turn. Okay, we just keep changing the wording. Resolves once a turn. If it's the first time, you can't... You can't be surprised that it's hard to follow what all this stuff does. You can't be surprised. All right, so we play an artifact... If we play an artifact here, this will be a 3-3. This can attack. If they block it, we can unearth it later. I think we just go big. Oh, wait. It's zero. It's always zero. <laughs> Unless we have six mana. Uh, submit zero because we're not growing to anything that way. Here goes the Wormlet. It's got Death Touch. You want to you wanna rumble? All right, let's see how many Brutal Cathars you have. <laughs> it's always another. The answer is always another one. Thalia, you coming in? Old. All right, we get to play our Rootwire Amalgam on the non-prototype side. Big old 5-5 five five that can become a 15-15 haste. Uh, oh man oh baby 7 to 22 what what you got the veteran okay creatures got a little larger okay guardian of new banalia that can block Firebridge tracker is that better or worse than putting two more counters here no, we're not making a 15-15 right now. Thank you. 
I think we put counters here and then we can attack with whatever. And if the opponent blocks, discards, goes indestructible, we have this to unearth next turn and keep the counters coming. Yeah. Imagine Asian Avenger and myself, and we we've played nothing but creatures. This is complete nonsense. Okay, they're gonna take out the Simeon. Looks like they're also gonna take out the Wormlet. Okay, we got rid of one of the Lords. Now I can get to drop the tracker. Twenty-three to two. So this can be exiled from the graveyard at instant speed to put a counter on each soldier you control. But watch out, these won't be soldiers if there's a transformation. So maybe you want to do it now. Danik. Okay. Well, life link is going to come in handy. No transformation though. Hmm. Five, five, and four, three. They'll find a... I guess they don't have the best blocks for sure. One card left. Probably wants to make this indestructible. I guess we're going to play the champion post-combat. What you got? Ganging up. That's not enough. You need two more damage. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Not sure what exactly is going on. Discard Miril. Uh, interesting point. I wasn't dealing enough damage to this to be lethal. That, so that was kind of a, a ploy I got away with there. It's very hard to tell who the damage is getting dealt to from the opponent's side. We get our greeters back. Can grab a plus one plus one counter here. Another keyword big 8-8, eight, eight, ready to rumble. Ladies and gentlemen, beware. The ape might be about to dab. Denik. Needs a one man away to stop me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, we're going for that. <laughs> that seems good. <laughs> Raw. Oh, is that a monkey? All right, we're on the play and we're on the curve. Let's get right to it. Wormlet, maybe into double pack leader. We'll see. Or it's into root wire. Yeah, let's double pack leader this turn. We might end up blocking with one of these, depending what comes out of Kamano faces Kakazan. Thermo Alchemist. Ugh. It's a 1 4 defender. We got Tail Swipe, though. Prototype. Guess it still doesn't get the job done. Let's see if the opponent wants to block, though. They do. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Kill it! Get out of my way! I've got a bunch of two ones that need to attack. Mechanized warfare. Okay, things are gonna deal extra. But, have we gotten far enough ahead that it won't matter? Swing! Trade with the Wormlet because of the Mechanized Warfare dealing an extra. Look at all my two ones and two threes just going to town. I'm so proud of my little green army. 
My little green robots. Reckless Impulse. A mountain and another mobilized warfare. This card is scary. If a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent, that much plus one. When that little one on there can mean a lot of things. But when you're down four creatures to none on the battlefield. Light up the night. Okay. That did the job. But will you be able to do that against this? Raw. That's going to be a tough one. Mono red down 21 to 5 facing an 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah. That's that's a beating. All right. What can I say about this mono green plus one plus one counter artifact aggro deck? The first thing that I want to say the most is that tail swipe is not a very good magic card, but you need something. You need a way to push through. So maybe we should be running the enchantment that gives our creatures trample. And when they die, it draws a card. Maybe that's a much better way to play this than tail swipe is. Um, so that would be my first recommendation. Something other than tail swipe in that spot. That new enchantment looks juicy. Um, this clay champion is really good. And so is the simian uh Simeon Simulacrum. The plus one, plus one counters. The Unearth. Very good. Rootwire, Rootwire Amalgam is like a lot of wasted text. This is so often just a two mana, two, three, or a five mana, five, five, that I don't think it's really worth the other abilities and probably could be something else. And I'm also still not sure about the two drops. Is it supposed to be Beast Caller and Gallagreeters in this? Are we supposed to maybe run the little, uh, the one, one with Ward two? patchwork automaton instead and run more artifacts because of that maybe but i do know that there's something going on there with the uh, simian simulacrum the clay champion like those cards to me seem really good and a great backbone for mono green and i can't wait to figure out exactly how the deck should play in the future as long as you get matched up against things like red or anywhere where damage based removal or size really matters you should have a good shot thank you for watching this video as always i will see you in the next video you're cool.